Hello everyone, welcome to this 45 days sprint of Git preparation on TechTed.com. Okay, so this is the video for 45 days sprint and we mostly intended to revise the things in this videos. So uh, we kind of skip basics, but yeah, uh, not all like we try to cover, but we assume that you know uh, the basic concepts already. So let's revise. CSMA CD which is under Ethernet, right? So we will go through the each of these terms CS then MA then CD. Okay, so first one is CS which stands for carrier sense. Okay, so what is carrier sense? When multiple channels are accessing the same carrier, so let's say we have This this is the channel. Okay, and here we have multiple nodes connected okay so this is let's say n1 this is n2 okay and both are intended or both are targeting to transfer the data over the same carrier the c right so the problem is or the problem arise when both the nodes or both the carrier uh, both the channels are trying to transfer the data at the same time okay so if there is a, a proper synchronization that when this node transfers the data to the channel or uses this carrier then this channel or node will wait okay so this will wait now when this will transfer this will wait so if similar synchronization is there then carrier is properly used but if there is a lack of synchronization or understanding or teamwork in a sense then there will be a problem so if these two channels or nodes tries to access this carrier at the same time so what will happen is let's say node n1 tries to send some data over this carrier to some node right and at the same time or maybe while this node is transferring the data i mean this node is still using the carrier this node also tries to transfer the data over this channel so in this case here collision occurs okay collision occurs and then this creates a problem which we will understand what we have to do in case of collision but this is called collision that both the nodes are trying to use this carrier at the same time right so this is carrier sense so in carrier sense means for each node okay whenever this node tries to use this carrier first it will sense the carrier that whether this carrier is being used by some channel some channel or not so to check whether this carrier is being used by some channel what it will do it will this node will just sense whether there is a voltage level in this carrier okay so if there is a voltage level in this carrier it means this carrier is being used by some other channel or some other node right because data is being transferred at the end at very low level data is being transferred in terms of voltage right in terms of bits right so this is called carrier sense since the carrier before you try to transfer or before you try to use the carrier okay so this is carrier sense since the carrier before using it now let's talk about multiple access so multiple access is something like this so this is my carrier now again I'm drawing two nodes or channels so this is one this is two this is n1 this is n2 now let's say this channel n1 sends this carrier at t equal to zero and at the same time t equal to zero this channel n2 or node n2 sends the carrier so if both the both the channels are sensing the carrier at the same time in that case they will sense that carrier is free that is carrier is free to use no one or no other channel is using this carrier right now so I can use it then what will happen they both will send the data at the same time okay so here what will happen multiple access the case of multiple access will be there that is multiple channels are accessing the carrier at the same time 
so here multiple access means multi multiple channels can access the carrier at the same time right so again in this case what will happen both the channel will transfer the data okay and this will arise the case of collision okay so again collision will be there when they both transfer the data on the carrier at the same time right now this collision has to be detected right in case of collision the collision has to be detected which is called collision detection too so we should have a mechanism to detect this collision okay and then resolve or take proper decision so this is basically collision detection so this is cd collision detection so in case of collision in case of collision both the both these nodes both these nodes n1 and n2 or the channels which are using the carrier at, at this time has to be notified that collision has occurred and you need to stop the transmission okay so for that what we produce is jamming signal okay so jamming signal is sent to the nodes this is jamming signal this is jamming signal so this jamming signal is sent to both the sent to the nodes right and this will the both the nodes which were trying to transfer the data that is if this is n2 this if this is n1 they will come to know that the collision has occurred and they will stop the transmission right now there can be an obvious confusion here that how do i know that whether this is a jamming signal or whether this is this jamming signal itself is a data packet from some other node so what i am trying to say here is let's say this is node which is transferring data right this is transferring data now some jamming signal is coming from here so this is jamming signal and this is data packet okay now this jamming signal is to notify that this this node has to stop transition stop transmission and restart it again later whenever it gets the carrier right but there may be a case that a jamming signal has been produced in this carrier and some node is trying to transfer the data so this jamming signal and this data itself may create a collision okay and then another jamming signal has to be sent right so this kind this this is kind of you know create a chain so in that case what happens is this jamming signal are kept different from what a data signal can be so uh, if there is a voltage level of let's say 5 plus 5 plus 5 to minus 5 for uh, this this data signals then for jamming signal it is plus 15 to minus 15 this this is the voltage level right so it is easily identified that this is basically jamming signal so somewhere in the channel collision has occurred and we need to stop transmission right so this is collision detection now on the basis of this co these concept which we have learned let's try to figure out some some important points which will be used in numericals so this is uh, our ethernet our lan and in this we have here n1 and n2 and this is i am considering n0 okay this is nn so these two are the furthest nodes attached to this ethernet okay now we have to find out or our target is to understand what can be the maximum length l of the data packet being transferred or the data packet that can be transferred from a node okay so what you can understand here is you know that when a carrier a, a channel is using this carrier okay so it will start transferring data right now in worst case data can data will maximum travel to the furthest node that is here so data will travel to this node right and so what may happen in between this data packet has reached up to here but at the same time 
this node senses the carrier and finds that it is not being used right now meanwhile when data packet comes up to this point this channel starts transferring data okay so this starts transferring now what will happen there will be a case of collision so there will be collision here now jamming signal is produced and jamming signal has to has to reach to this node okay so you can understand by the time when this jamming signal this jamming signal reaches to this particular node it has to keep transferring the data right so let's say when this jamming signal reaches to this node this node has already finished its transmission so this node never knows whether there was a collision and whether the data has lost okay so the idea is that we keep this length of the frame as large so that this node is transferring the data at least at at least for the time for which the jamming signal produced at the last end reaches to this node okay so let me rephrase it again this node to this node has to keep transferring the data for at least the time for which the jamming peak signal produced at this dead end at this last end comes back to this node right so that while transferring this data itself jamming signal reaches to this node and this node come to know that there has been a collision in the carrier and then it understands that this particular frame I have to resend okay so it means that this transfer time so if I say uh, if this is L and if this is bandwidth okay this L by B has to be equal to this propagation time and jamming signal propagation time which is equal to 2 times of D by V right which is equal to RTT right so using this you will be able to solve multiple problems from previous gate here so this is the concept the key idea is we have to transmit the frame until the we have to this node have to this node has to transfer the data frame until the jamming signal comes back from this extreme end okay it has to transfer the data frame keep transferring the data frame at least for the time for which jamming signal can come from this extreme end okay which is equal to twice of rtt right i'm i might appear to be repeating it multiple times but that is something which you should you know understand well right so good so this is all about this lecture uh, in next lecture we will just simply solve a problem on this taking some numerical value okay so it was all for this lecture now see in the next lecture thanks for watching